Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode six of the Network Podcast. My name is Sebastiano Villano, and I'm joined by Joseph Inzano, as always. What's going on, guys? All right, so we know we took a, a pretty long break. We didn't expect to take that long of a break, but uh, Joe went to Florida for a couple of weeks, and then it was just difficult to uh, to get it going again with our schedules. But we're back. We're ready to keep the episodes going every Monday. So today's episode is going to be on um, travel and languages. But to start off, we're going to do a little bit of a new segment called Overrated or Underrated. So for this episode, we have five topics kind of pertaining to travel. And we're going to have to say if we believe they're overrated or underrated, then we're going to have a little bit of discussion about it. Also, look at our Instagram at the underscore network underscore pod. Uh, when the episode comes out on Monday, we'll post these polls, see if you guys think they're overrated or underrated. So, Joe, first thing, long car rides or long plane rides? Do you think they're overrated or underrated? All right. Uh, long car rides, overrated. Long plane rides, depends what class you're in. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever not been in – what's what's the main – the cheap one, economy? Have yeah. you ever been in business or first class? No, never. Have you? That, that's I'm sure my dream. I'm, nah. <laughs> I'm sure a 12 hour flight you know, maybe, in first maybe this, class isn't too bad, you know, but I, yeah, maybe I, this podcast takes off a little bit more. You'll see the boys, first class flights everywhere, you know? But yeah, I've yeah, only maybe, been in the economy. Maybe we'll be able to, maybe we'll be able to get economy. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, what's the longest flight you've been on? Uh, twelve hours. I went to you six been... hours. Wait, six hours to California, six hours to Hawaii, or from California to Hawaii. So it was twelve total, but there's uh, a short overlay. Two separate You've been six ones. Yeah, I think the long. Yeah, how long's Italy? Um, I think I th- the when I went to Germany, we went to I think Denmark first, and then we went to Germany. I think that was like eight nine hours might have even been 10 like straight and then to italy i think it was like seven or eight because we flew into switzerland so yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't great i think they're both i feel like a car is more underrated because i'm just thinking about you know how we used to go on those hershey trips back in um middle school we were both we both did music so just having that, like three or four hour bus ride with your friends you could kind of just chill you had plenty of space it's not as cramped up as a car or maybe even a plane i thought that was fun it depends what you consider long i mean two hours to hershey is not long in my opinion uh okay let's say like well, what, what were you thinking like 10 hour plus yeah like yeah yeah 10 hour plus have you, you ever been on a 10 hour plus right, well. drive um I went to the Outer Banks a couple of times. I think it might have taken us 10 hours because of traffic. I think it's not bad if you're driving the whole time and there's no traffic, even if it's a longer car ride. I feel like 12 hours with no traffic isn't the same as an eight-hour drive with traffic. It's just the fact that you're so close to your destination, or at least when I was going to the Outer Banks, and the traffic, we were barely moving, just made it so much worse. Yeah, I mean, we so, like I drove to Florida recently and it was brutal. I mean, it was we did it all in one. Um, I forget how many hours it was, but it was brutal. You didn't stop at all. No, we didn't stop at oh, all. I mean, obviously, and especially when you have to drive, brutal. <laughs> you had to drive to Florida. I had to drive part of it. Like we kind of switched off and like rotated off, but like when you gotta go for like those like four hour stints, not fun. I feel like, I don't know. I don't know if that would be better or worse. Cause Maybe if it was focused the whole time, you just get your music. If it was all the boys, it would be different, but it was kind of family. Not saying that, well, you know. Yeah, we get it. You don't like your family. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I know what you mean. Cause the boys, like even when we went on our ski trips for like, they were only an hour, hour and a half, still longer. Not as long as obviously what we were talking about. We're just talking about the most random things. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's kind of just chilling. It's not like your fam. Yeah, I know what you mean with your family. <laughs> like I, I'd, ra- I'd rather not your family in particular, mine as well. I'd rather, I'd rather be on a long car ride with the boys. Just the vibes are better. You can listen to whatever music you want. Yeah. You can just chill. Yeah. So you're gonna say overrated overall? 
Oh uh, yes, yeah. Or underrated. underrated. I'd say over, I'm gonna overrated. go. I'm gonna go with under. For, I'm gonna go with. I can see where you're coming from. I'm sorry, you had something to add. If it's like a two hour, I'd say like for like two hour car rides, that's underrated. But longer than that, like ten hour car rides, that's overrated. Yeah, I don't think I've been on. I, as I said, I might have been on a ten hour one. That was a while ago. But I'm I'm gonna go underrated. It depends on the exact distance and who you're with. But um, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go underrated. I think it's still nice to just chill, maybe take a little bit of a nap, listen to some music, talk with your friends. All right, Joe, you want to go on to the next one? Uh, yeah, we got airports. Are you a fan of airports? Because mm. my family, I don't want to call anyone out, <clears throat> mom. Very stressful experience in these airports. Let me tell you, <laughs> it is not. I mean, it is. Uh, we get there hours before to, you know, basically sit and wait for our plane for a couple hours and get on with yeah. hours to spare. But it's not a fun time. Not a fun time. <laughs> My mom's the same way. I f- I like airports. I don't know why. Even when I've gone to pick up someone, I guess it's because I'm seeing family I haven't seen in a while. Usually when I'm going to pick them up or I feel like just subconsciously, whether you're going on, well, you associate them with vacations and those are always fun. Mm-hmm. Even if you're going to pick someone up, I feel like subconsciously you might be thinking the same thing or you're kind of just like you're thinking about how you could get away or just go somewhere you've always wanted. I feel like everyone likes traveling too. So they're thinking about that. But yeah, I know what you mean about the stressful thing. I'm like, uh, the past few times, especially I was younger. So obviously I'm not getting stressed about, you know, if our luggage is too heavy. Because I know <laughs> when we're coming back from Europe, everyone's trying to give us stuff to take back home. Mm-hmm. We always have to worry about if our luggage is light enough or we're going to have to pay extra. Yeah, I feel like as a parent, it's stressful. But we usually get there hours before. We go, we breeze right through it. Surprisingly, there was no hold up, which is why we got there hours before. And then we sit there. We're like, all right, fine. We're finally here. How much more time? We got? I was like, yeah, like three hours. <laughs> like, yeah. why did we have to get here so early? <laughs> but yeah, I, even though even though everyone likes them, I'm still going to say underrated. I feel everyone like everyone likes them. I don't know if I could name one person that enjoys okay. an airport. <laughs> I feel like everyone around our age is just like you say airports you're like oh man I love airports but I, f- I feel like the adults that have to think of does everyone have their passports does everyone have their boarding passes is all this paid for did I forget anything I can understand why it's stressful for them <laughs> who says I love airports <laughs> me <laughs> okay <laughs> alright well you're talking to the wrong people the only time I enjoy an airport is maybe before like a vacation trip. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe before. Well, <laughs> how often are you going to the airport? It's you're usually there before a vacation trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not always. Not always. When but... you you're just like a, a regular Saturday, you're like I'm not. I got nothing to do. I'm just gonna head up to the airport today. You know, see what's going on. <laughs> you love airports so much. You know. <laughs> <laughs> all right i can go to the next one all right the next one is just cities cities in general what do you think about cities i'm not a huge fan of cities besides really um no not not a huge fan of cities i was gonna say boston but why, why aren't you a Boston's huge fan are. of cities my, my my older brother hates cities as well mm, i'm not a huge people person i don't like being around like huge crowds of people not my thing so Big cities, a lot of people. Nope. Too busy, too complicated. For it's you. loud. It's it's hectic. It's kind of, it's a lot. You know, it's a lot. Yeah, but you said you do you do like Boston. What about like New York, Philadelphia? Uh, never been to Philly. Just- New York, I think it's overrated. I think MSG is nice, but I think it's overrated. I'm going to go with underrated. I feel like we're just picking the opposite. Um, But, I mean, Drexel's in Philly, so I've only... I've been a few times, and I think I mentioned this on one of our earlier podcasts when we said what we want to do with the future. I don't know why. I I just want to live in the city for a bit, just experience it. There's so much to do. It's pretty lively. I kind of like that about the city. I mean, the really city, the cities I've mainly experienced is really New York and Philadelphia that I've been to multiple times. I've been to Boston 
but I've only really been there a couple times, spent a few hours in the city. Um, no, like, Washington, D.C., I've been... And when I went to Europe, I wasn't really in major cities or not, not for a long time. So I, I haven't really experienced that. But I feel like also in other countries, that's where everything, that's where all the things are to do. Um, yeah, I'm going to say underrated. I feel like there are a lot of things to do. It's just kind of a nice vibe, in my opinion. I can understand why people don't like them, though. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just scrolling through TikTok, you occasionally see uh this person living in New York in their penthouse, and you're like, you know, damn, that's nice, but I don't know. I don't know how much. You, <laughs> you also see the TikToks. You're like, $1 million New York penthouse, and it's like a toilet yeah, like and, a, a and a bed. That's it. You're like, yeah, yeah, I don't know if that's really worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that if you have their pros and cons, I'm going to go with underrated, though. All right. All right, what we got for the next one? All right, beaches. All right, we're going with the like, right, boardwalk. Number four, we got beaches. Oh, 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 I just said that. Are we going with <laughs> boardwalk <laughs> slash beaches? Are we going with like, yeah, boardwalk yeah, we can, slash we can... beaches? All right, if yeah, you... we can take boardwalks into account. If you add the boardwalk, it might be underrated. Um, maybe not underrated, but I, I, I can. Uh, it, I like it. It's it's nice. It's in the middle, yeah. Yeah, it's in the well, middle. I know, I know it's in the middle. The beach. I'm not I mean, a... I can understand when sometimes you get to the beach, you're like, yes, going to the beach. You know, it's finally summer. You haven't been there in a while, and then you get there, you're like, oh, what the heck do I do now? So it's like, I get that. I'm going to go with underrated as well. It also depends what beach. Like, if, like in Italy, when I go to the beach, it's obviously a lot different than if I'm just like going to the shore for a day in New Jersey. Nothing like the Jersey shore. I still shore. think that's fun. <laughs> yeah, nah. The beaches in Italy are really nice, and obviously, just being on vacation, your whole thought process is different. Your whole, the whole feeling is different. But um, yeah, even like other parts of the U.S., it's kind of like, especially pa my parents. I usually go with them. Like they don't really feel like doing anything. My parents are just maybe my mom will want to go for a walk. My my dad just likes to sit there and tan. Like I don't know what's so fun about that. Maybe yeah. hearing the sounds of the waves is relaxing but i'm gonna go with underrated especially i love the boardwalk it's, i went to ocean city maryland last year i don't know why there's just something about walking up and down the boardwalk seeing like the ferris wheel lit up at night it made me feel young again you know <laughs> sure, <but. laughs> now, now that i think about it more um it's definitely underrated like i, I was thinking more of jersey shore which but yeah i've been to hawaii i don't know why people think the jersey shore is so nice it is horrible like people from other states they're like oh yeah the shore in jersey i'm like what there's so many better places in the u.s but yeah like when i was in hawaii the water so, was so just, mr hawaii over here yeah the water was just so clear and you could like swim next to huge turtles and it was really cool like stuff like that's cool swimming in the jersey shore is not cool it's not fun. Yeah, if you get to in in Hawaii, you got to like actually swim in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was like Italy. There's no waves. The water was clear. We had like our snorkels on and our goggles. We could even go a little far out. It was nice just to swim there. But I I, I guess even if they're in New Jersey, if you go with the right group of people, actually plan it out, like bring enough water, bring some food maybe an umbrella and just chill. I feel like that could still, that's still underrated, but yeah, overall I'm going to go underrated as well. Finally one we agreed on. Yep. Yep. All right. The last one is kind of the opposite of cities. It's just going to be um, going on vacation or going on a trip to the countryside or kind of just like the middle of nowhere, whether that's camping up in the mountains, wherever. Mm. I'm going to say I haven't, really been anywhere in the u.s for like an extended trip maybe like a day kind of into nature and stuff but in italy um one of the places that my mom has family is called pietra cupa it's like two and a half hours south a little bit south and east of rome it's it's up in the mountains it's beautiful but there's like literally nothing to do i mean there's a soccer field and the view is amazing but other than that there's really not much to do. 
So I'm, even though I literally just said there's not much to do, I'm still gonna go underrated. I think it's underrated. And I can too. explain a little bit more after you talk. I think it's underrated. Why too. do you think that? Well, we're talking about like kind of, you know, you say middle of nowhere. Like I went to New York, up in like that, or like gotta Upstate be New York. Yeah, yeah, like about a year ago, um, and. It, it was nice, like, being in the back. It, like, like, it was up in the Adirondacks, so we were, like, in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. It was just in the woods, and we got this, like, log cabin. I wouldn't I wouldn't say log that cabin. Cool. It was a little bigger than a log cabin, but it was cool. We got to go, like, trout fishing. We went zip lining. We got to go on hikes and stuff like that. So that stuff's a lot of fun, you know? Um, there's some strange people out there, but <laughs> besides <laughs> the that. Mountain, the mountain folk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean especially where we live now we don't live in the city but it's not the middle of nowhere there are things to do it's kind of busy sometimes it's nice i feel like just vacations are nice in general just to get a change of scenery hit reset and the next topic we're going to go into which relates to this is um just where we've been and where any trips we plan on going and one of the trips i i'm going to the summer is one of my friends from um drexel she lives in upstate New York, and it's it's in the middle of nowhere, really. But I'm still excited to go for stupid things. Like she said, oh, there's no light pollution, so you could see the stars. I know that sounds kind of dumb, but just like not something you can experience. And oh, what are you laughing at? <laughs> the light pollution, you know? <laughs> yeah, and like even just a bit of hiking. I guess, especially with the past year, haven't done much traveling, so really going anywhere kind of sounds good yeah so i'm gonna go overall we agreed on that one underrated country in the middle of nowhere so we're gonna post Mm -hmm. these on our story on monday when these come out just to go over them again we have five of them number one long car or plane rides two airports three cities four beaches and five the countryside or the middle of nowhere for vacation so be on the lookout on our instagram stories on monday now we're going to go into the next thing which i alluded to travel so joe we start initially started our two-week break because you went to disney so uh you want to tell tell us a little bit about that how that was uh it was a trip to disney and it was a good time uh, really very descriptive no it's say they still had the mask uh rule they got rid of it i think a week after we left which it was fine i didn't mind wearing the mask to be honest with you you know, uh, Matty Mo would say different, but yeah. it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I knew how I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't bother me that bad. Um, but yeah, it, it was supposed to I mean, to you be... go to Disney quite often, so it yeah, wasn't I anything wanna say, like Yeah, uh... I don't want to say it wasn't special, because it, it's always nice going down. It, um, but it, it, was, it was a lot more packed than it was when I went down the other time I went down during COVID. Um but it, it, it what was that last last april right yeah no no it, it was closed in april it was it was like august last august but anyways are you it, they have it at like i think they still have it at 25 or 33 percent capacity or whatever like that but it's hitting like the max of like the 33 percent capacity so it's almost what it would be like on a normal park day if like if there wasn't covid so it's still fairly packed you know what i'm saying yeah, I understand what you're saying. Was there any like new attractions or anything that you went to that you haven't previously done? I know you go like once or twice a year, so th- no. there's not that much to do for you unless they come out with new rides. Well, they 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 they're, they're refurbishing a lot of stuff right now because I think they're trying to do a lot of that. Well, the park was closed down for a bit, and so a lot of the parks are getting worked on and stuff still. But it's still a good time going down. Yeah, that's nice. That's definitely somewhere I want to get to at some point just to experience it. Um, and you also have a pretty uh, cool trip coming up in the summer where you're going to go across the U.S., go to national parks. How are you feeling about that? And do you want to just like, explain it for everyone listening exactly what you're going to be doing? No, I'm excited about that. Where I'm going to fly down to Florida, and my aunt lives there. So me, my aunt, and I think Zach's coming. I'm not sure. I'm yeah, maybe. Which is your brother, in case yes, the listeners don't know. my brother. My little brother. And we're gonna start. You're little, he's one year younger than you. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start in the Everglades and go kayaking and stuff like that. 
and then we're gonna make our way west over to Carlsbad Caverns, which is, I think, in New Mexico. I haven't, we haven't got it all planned out yet, but we're gonna go from there up to Mesa Verde, which has like the cliff dwellings. Then we're gonna head west again to Zion National Park, and then we're gonna hit a few on our way back, like the Badlands when we're coming back to New Jersey. So I'm really looking forward to that. That should be a lot of fun. That's in like two months, I think. So you're you're flying down to Florida and then you're driving all the way across the U.S., going to some national parks around California, New Mexico, Arizona, going up a little bit and then making making the trip all the way across. Yep. We just ran the mileage on it. It's like 81 hours or something like that of straight driving. You know, that's no traffic. That's just... That's just 81 hours. I think I, I don't know what the total mileage is, but that's how many hours. That's yeah, the whole trip. Yeah, I yeah, haven't. I've a, never driven that time much. Being, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of time being cooped up in a car for someone who uh, said long <laughs> car rides were overrated. But um, yeah. yeah. No, regardless, that sounds that sounds awesome. I mean, we just talked about how we think kind of trips to the middle of nowhere are underrated and even though national parks aren't the middle of nowhere they're kind of the same thing it's like nature you get to see some wildlife like alligators down south and and whatnot well, it's not the city like you're not going to a city where it's packed and stuff very industrial i think they're it's all pretty be, different though be... i think i mean like you know the everglades isn't gonna be you know the grand canyon it's two totally different yeah experiences I'd yeah say. i actually didn't know that <laughs> well i'm just saying you know you said it's like <laughs> they're all the same you can't you know i know what you mean i know what you mean they all have something different to offer but they're all kind of um you know different things with nature. i know what you mean. i think I that's really mean. cool and you plan on like buying a kayak and kayaking in yeah the rivers i feel like that's going to be so sick just kayaking probably some beautiful scenery around you that's going to be crazy yeah swim with some gators, and you know. um <laughs> yeah um as for myself hopefully i'm gonna get to spain this summer um i was supposed to go last summer um with there's a soccer tournament called the euros which is like the world cup but only for european teams and so that's what we initially scheduled it for but then with covid that all got canceled so now if i go i'm not gonna be able to get to go to a game but hopefully just to go to spain we plan on going to bilbao if covid guidelines allows it and all that right now i think it's looking like europe could be opening up in july i believe i don't know if you've seen something different i heard that i thought they were or at least opening allowing. up from i could be wrong i also saw one that it, they were opening earlier in june um for vaccinated people i thought they already did that at I least thought they like just did that i read something i'm not sure that don't i read something <laughs> that that, that Nah, I read something that they were opening up to certain countries, some of the ones that have handled it better, like Australia, New Zealand, countries like those. But I believe I could be wrong to the U.S. Um, it's still you couldn't just travel freely even if you had a vaccine. You had to do the thing that they've been doing, like quarantine for two weeks, negative covid test, all that stuff. I believe either in early July or June that they're going to be um. They're just gonna be letting you go as long as you have both your vac or both shots or vaccine. One in the case of Johnson and Johnson. But yeah, I'm excited for that. Just to travel. Are you are you I vaccinated? Said. Yeah, yeah. I got I got both my Pfizer doses. You got both of yours as well, right? How you feeling? You feeling okay? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, these really feeling the after effects of these shots, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, after, I know what you're saying, because obviously there's some anti-vaxxers that, um, I mean, they could be right. You never know if there are some long-term effects that we haven't tested for, but, you know, don't want to, uh, don't want to offend anyone. But, um, yeah, I mean, just after the second dose, I wasn't feeling great, even after the first dose, but now I'm feeling fine. I'm happy to be vaccinated. Next um, thing you, you know, know Bill getting. Gates is at your front door and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> with, a, with a little microchip yeah. in my brain. Yeah. Um, other than that, 
I mean, we did talk about our first ever episode. We thought how they were doing with the podcast. Uh, sorry, not the podcast. How they were doing with the vaccine in New Jersey specifically. What I did want to bring up um, was that I actually thought it was really efficient where I went. I went to the Edison Convention Center, which is, I think, the probably the main one in Middlesex County. Um, and I went in, like, really quickly you know, it was really organized. You, you, it was really easy to know where you were going. There were people there in case you had any questions or you, you couldn't figure it out on your own. But the second dose I got, I went, I entered the building and started my 15 minute period where you had to rest within like five minutes. So I went in, they scanned my card, sat down, made sure all my information was correct, got the shot. And it was, it was fast. I, I was pretty impressed by that. And also we have, I think I just checked um, like 4.1 million New Jerseyans officially vaccinated with both doses. So I guess we're going in the right direction. Do you have anything to say about how the vaccine has been getting rolled out or whatnot? Yeah, no, I, by the process when I got mine was really efficient too. It was, it was real quick. I, I got mine at, I got mine at Ryder, Ryder University. They had a, um, yeah, I guess. A Where's station. that Lawrenceville? I think I'm not quite sure, but they had a station there. And it was super, it was super, they had lines, everything, well, the military was there, and they were filing yeah. people in, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was just a little COVID update, hopefully I can make it to Europe this summer, but regardless, hope maybe, if not, go on some smaller trips in the U.S., I wanted to ask you, obviously you've been to Disney a lot of time, you said you've been to Hawaii, Aruba, what do you think is the best trip that you've ever been on uh hawaii or the best or your favorite hawaii no doubt so how long ago did you go to hawaii and what did you do there probably four years ago now or something four or five maybe even six man <laughs> i'm getting older <laughs> uh, it was it was no it might have been even earlier i don't know i can't i what can't what grade were you in do you remember no it was earlier it was between my sixth and seventh grade year, so four, five, six, seven years ago. Holy, oh man, <laughs> we are getting like, old, Joe. That was like four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what what'd you do there? Oh, uh, we did everything. We stayed there for a month. Um, so we like we went from island to island. Jeez. We started on the Big yeah. Island, and. We stayed in like a condo that was and you could the volcanoes right out your window, and we went and we visited the volcano and there was like lava pouring out of it, pretty cool. And then, dude, we we went swimming with huge sea turtles. I mean, these things were like as big as like twice the size. I don't want to say twice the size you, but they were massive. Like the ones from Nemo. Yeah, like the ones from Nemo. Yeah, <laughs> we went. We went on one hike that was so cool, and you climbed up. You climbed up the volcano, but you could look back over the island, and you could see the whole entire island from the view and just the shoreline and everything. It was, it was beautiful. Yeah, that's so a, that cool. sounds really nice. You, that's better than any Disney trip you've ever been on. Better than Aruba. It's hard to say. I think it's the my favorite place that I've gone. I don't know. If, I don't know if it's necessarily my favorite that makes, trip. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Yeah, for me, I'm probably. I think I might have to say Germany. I went before my freshman year to see my uncle get married, and it was just my mom, my younger brother, and I. Um, even though I do really like my last trip to Italy. Even though I haven't been to Italy in a while, I have been there multiple times. So I wouldn't say like it was as much as I love Italy and I like going there. It wasn't anything new. So I feel like Germany, I haven't been to Europe in a really long time. My mom hasn't gotten to see her family in Europe. It was the first time I was meeting my aunt because my uncle was uh, getting married. Um, Just visiting different parts of Germany and seeing that and just his wedding and that wedding night was a lot of fun, too. So I think right now that was that was my favorite one. But um, I remember I forgot to bring it up when we were talking about plane rides on my way back from Italy. So unfortunately, it was the th- once again, when we went to Italy, it was just my uh, myself, my younger brother and my mom. 
it's because my older brother was on co-op or in college and my dad was working or whatever we didn't have we didn't have three seats together Mm -hmm. which is what we were able to have the first time we were able to be right next to each other so one of them was the um the it was like aisle my mom and my brother were next to each other and then i was by myself kind of right next to them but this lady comes in i don't even know if she she's i couldn't tell how old she was she was older you know um she didn't even really seem like she spoke english or understood english with all this baggage with her like you're supposed to have one bag on the plane she had a bunch of bags who knows what was in the bag i saw some fresh eggs were, were with her i i don't even know how that's allowed just like five different bags with all this stuff she was taking and she was just like squishing me the whole time um i guess in that case going back to before plane rides may have been <laughs> overrated but <laughs> That, that was not a fun time. She went to the bathroom like five different times. I had to get up, wait for her to come back. And it was like, it took her like five minutes to get into her seat because she had all her stuff there crammed up and she was just old. But, but yeah, that, that wasn't the best experience. I got a plain story too. When I was younger, this had to be like 10 years ago. I don't know. Maybe more. This guy I mean, behind Who knows me. with your sense of time. Yeah, seriously. Oh, you don't have to listen if you don't want to, guys. But this guy behind me, like before the plane ride, before we take off, he's like, "Oh, I'm feeling kind of queasy." And as we I don't take like off, where this is going. <laughs> we get up into the air, and he blows chunks not down, just blows chunks straight <laughs> through the seats, right all over me, like all over me. It was like he was aiming for me. It was, and I had to get a new shirt. It was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> he didn't get his barf bag ready or something? Dude, straight through the seats. All over me. It was disgusting. Did the airline say anything? Did they offer you like no. a free meal, half off your flight or anything? <laughs> no, I I think we I think I got moved to a different seat. I, I think or maybe he got moved to a different seat. I don't remember. <laughs> It was a while ago. They, they just they just threw him off the plane. No, we were in the air at that point. I, I just I remember like yeah, having exactly. a chain in my shirt and everything. <laughs> and that was brutal. Sorry for sharing that, guys. Oh, that that would be that that would be a nightmare. Oh my god. I was so young. I barely remember. All right, any? But... Yeah. Um, besides, obviously, we talked about your immediate trip to travel across the U.S. Do you have any, within the next four or five years, any plans to go to Europe or just yes. another country, see something new? Well, I'll just lead into the next topic here. And I do plan on going to Italy and I'm learning Italian. That's good. Basically fluent. I've been on Duolingo for a little <laughs> under a month. <laughs> yeah, are you fluent? You, you're fluent. You want to give us a couple, a couple sentences, I'm Jim? not saying anything. I don't want to embarrass myself, but... Yeah, I will say I'm but beating. But the reason Saban. that we bring this up, I'm beating Saban XP. All right. I think I'm actually, I actually, I actually, I, yeah, XP, he's doing a little, little cheats to get XP. <laughs> I actually have more crowns, but it's not a competition. But anyway, um, just for <laughs> that goes into the next topic. We're both, we're both learning languages. Um, right now I'm currently learning German, and um, you're currently learning Italian. Do you just want to go into why, why you're learning Italian, why you started? Uh, I'm from Italian descent. And I'd like to learn Italian. And I'd like to go to Italy. So those are my reasons. That's that's kind of it. I mean, I'm, I'm bored at work. Maybe that's another one. <laughs> that's yeah. I mean, I think learning languages are great. Um, I'm learning German because I do want to learn Italian. I can understand it pretty well. But um, I haven't learned it from scratch. So I don't really know the grammar that well, how to formulate a sentence. But with German, I kind of made it my goal at the beginning of the year because uh, my uncle, my little cousin, and my aunt are visiting the U.S. Hopefully, it'll be all good by the time they come in November for Thanksgiving. So I wanted to be able to speak German to them, even though my uncle speaks English. But also, um, I do go to Drexel, and I wanted to get a co-op in Germany because my uncle works for a company that he thinks they could get me a co-op. So I'm kind of trying to learn German now. So I can keep using it over the next couple of years and be fluent by the time hopefully I, um, I get to go. So yeah, I mean it's, it's pretty fun. I do want to say shout out to Duolingo, 
Because, you know, if they ever want to sponsor us, we will gladly endorse them. I feel like they... I don't know how it's going to be once I actually finish the course. Because I I have been a little skeptical because I read some reviews and they're like, yeah, it's good for the basic, but you're really not going to be fluent at the end of it. Which did scare me a bit, but I think... Um, hopefully I'll be able to talk to my mom in German and she can... Just using it a lot will help me. Um, reading in German, watching some TV shows. I think just trying to immerse myself as much as possible will help me. But yeah, I think I think the app is really good and it's helping it's helping me a lot both of us have we have um bought the uh what's it called this the one year subscription for duolingo yeah, premium so now i got milked you, you, into you think that's worth it um, oh 80 80 80 for a year 80 for a year hard to say i mean i i just bought it so i have been on it a lot more since i bought it but i yeah that's what I say. If anyone wants to learn a new language, I would recommend Duolingo. The basic the basic version is free if you want to just try that. But the reason I think I'm on it a lot more with the plus because not only does it have a few more features, but I think the fact that it doesn't go to an ad after every lesson is so helpful. That is nice. Because I used nice. to like I used to do a lesson, get an ad, and then I would just quit out of the app because I didn't feel like going through mm. the ad. But now I'm so much more likely to do multiple lessons in a row. And they also have like the mastering quizzes, which I'm a fan of. It kind of, whether how accurate it is or not, it tells you how much of the course you've done, how much you've mastered. And I feel like that's good to track your progress as well. Yeah, I agree. I think the ads, no ads is great because it would waste my double XP time. I wasn't happy about that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um... Do you have any goal with Italian? Like, by obviously, you want to speak it fluently, but is there a certain, like, by the end of the year, you want to speak it fluently? In three months, you want to speak it fluently? In a month, you want to be able to understand it well? What, what are your goals exactly for uh, Italian? Uh, well, I know by the end of the year, I am not going to be speaking it fluently just because I have nobody to speak it to. Um, like, no well, you got to hit up my parents. I mean, how many? Yeah, that is true. That's it. You got an advantage there. Neither, not, neither, of, any, neither of my parents speak a language, a different language. Um, but I don't know, just to improve, I hope I can finish the Italian course by the end of the year on Duolingo, on Duolingo. Oh man, you're, I think you're, you're definitely, you've only had it for like a month or two and you're, um, Oh, that's true. That's true. You're, I hope I can like halfway or or you're at least a quarter. You're at least a quarter, right? I'm like 33%. Yeah. So that's solid. I think you're definitely able to finish by the end of the year. You know, you got. You just said you got eighty-one hours worth of a car journey That's true. over the summer. That's true. Bang out the Italian there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, do you have any? Well, we've talked about it briefly, but do you have um, any future languages you'd like to learn? Mm, probably Italian, French. That's Italian, maybe any reason for French, or just because uh, my piano teacher speaks French. So maybe I could talk to her. Okay. In French, but that's that's, that's what Zach, Zach speaks a little French too. Um, but may, maybe maybe <laughs> I mean he takes he takes French. I don't know how much French he speaks. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I don't. But I feel one one thing I won't really just focusing on Italian. Then you'll go from there. I was looking at it. They've got a true Valyrian. They just added that. You could speak Game of Thrones on what Duolingo, guys. You could speak Game of Thrones. It's an actual thing. Uh, you can go on Duolingo and learn the Game yeah. of Thrones language. You you are you are the type of nerd that would like to do that. But anyway, Sabre doesn't watch Game of Thrones yet. He doesn't know how good it is. <laughs> I would I would watch it, but after everyone said the last season literally ruined the whole series, I don't think I'm even gonna bother trying to watch it. That is a horrible excuse to not watch five of the greatest seasons. In in, I, yeah, but in show I, history, or it takes it takes so much time, and do I really want to get it's a great so show. involved it's in it minute. just to know that it? Like, you like the last season? No, no, I don't. But the first <laughs> five seasons were amazing. We should we should do an episode on that. We should do an episode uh, on shows, movies, and shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll do an episode on movies and shows for Sabe, sure. Sabe gonna I also in. just got. Sib was gonna spend an hour on the Polar Express. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say the Office. <laughs> Bro, the Polar Express. We'll, we'll talk about that some some other time. Polar Express, banging Christmas movie, best of all time. But um, 
I I got my dad to finally watch Breaking Bad, and he was he was a big fan of that. I think that might be. I don't know if it's my favorite show. Definitely the best show I've watched. Just how it was made, how it kind of, you know, evoked your emotions, how they kind of made each character. They each had their faults and stuff. But I want to go back to languages. I feel like the reason you said you didn't want to speak Italian is because you didn't want to embarrass yourself. Mm. I'm kind of feeling the same way with other languages. I think that's kind of why it's hard to learn them. And it's kind of giving me a little sympathy for like other people in the U.S. because you have so many people um, that even I see like at ShopRite or that I'm talking to that English isn't their first language and they're trying so hard to learn it. And I feel like sometimes in our head, we're like, come on, like you can't speak English or like you can't speak English properly. I've never you thought You have a heavy that. accent. Never. Oh, that, yeah, that might yeah just okay, be... okay, okay, okay. I don't know if you're trying to <laughs> yeah, okay, say something to... here, pal. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right you know you guys know what i'm talking about you guys know what i'm talking about who, who, who is we <laughs> <laughs> the listeners the listeners know what i'm talking about but and then even myself even though like it's literally just to my parents like what do i have to be embarrassed about i'm, I'm so afraid to make a mistake with the new language or i'm gonna pronounce something wrong so i feel like that is a bit a bit of a roadblock but yeah i'm i'm trying to learn german as i said by november I think I think I can do a solid job understanding it, but um, at least I can understand it slowly. You and I were talking before we started recording. Once we try and listen to like a video in the real world or a TV show, it's over. It's going so fast. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all fun and games when you can put it at like half speed. Yeah. Listen, read each word. I, take your time. Well, I can I can read Italian much better than I can formulate a sentence in my head. That's, yeah, that's a whole I, th- I think that challenge. that's that's how it is. You could recognize words, but then there are just so many new words that yeah. you're just trying to think of them off the top of your head. I mean, mainly, I, I don't think like people realize how many words they actually like different words they actually speak until you try to you know learn a new language and then you're like, man, I I can't even form a sentence because I don't know three of the words in the sentence and I've only learned half of them. Yeah, and it's like the even like things you don't even think about like he him his your even those you don't even think about and i i just learned them the other day and i'm like and now in german there's like uh there's different tenses for everything i feel like with european european languages um it's like the singular then there's plural which i know in um in english there's also plural but then there's so many different ways to add plural in Amer in english it's uh it's mostly just add an s the words plural and german it's like you might add an accent on a letter in the mm-hmm. middle of the word you might add an n i think some you add like an er or an r some you add an e at the end it's it's hard to keep up and also i don't know if you're having trouble with this in italian i don't remember when i started learning italian for a bit how their word order is but the word order in german is messing me up especially with negatives it's like Sometimes it goes at the end, but if it's like a noun, then it goes before it. If it's a verb, it goes here. And I'm just like, I can't keep up with it sometimes. Yeah, it, it is like that in Italian. Like some of the adjectives come, uh, they come after the, the noun. So it's it's just different, you know. But yeah. So, so personally, I'm gonna want to learn German, then go back. I, as I said, I can understand Italian well kind of do all that get really good in italian or fluent in it hopefully talking to my parents then go back and finish up french which i was talking in school and then just go from there maybe spanish i I don't know i'm pretty interested in learning languages especially with with duolingo i think it's pretty easy yeah it's it's and it's fun it's not as much as a chore that's because i also had a book that i was trying before and i feel like i'm already on my phone i always have it with me it's pretty convenient yeah yeah. All right, Joe. Anything about traveling? Anything about languages that you wanna want to talk about before we wrap up? No, I think um, we covered it all. All right, guys. Once again, I just want to thank you for listening. Our first episode back. As I said, we're gonna try and plan more in ahead. Especially he's going away for a month. I might be gone for a week in Spain. We're gonna try and record ahead so we don't have these like six week gas. We didn't plan on this. Sorry about that. But um, just thank you guys for listening. And we'll uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week, guys.